Happy New Year. Happy New Year. This is going to be a service of winging it. Uh, it's a combination. What I tried to do is, because we missed both the Christmas Eve service and the Christmas Day service last Sunday, to combine elements of all three of them into our, uh, our, our, our worship today. Uh, and it's, it's, it's been a challenge. Uh, Abigail, our uh, administrative assistant, uh, has been out ill. And so I want to uh, thank Sharon Borco, who has been the pastor on call this week, to, uh, to uh, uh, type up my very rough draft of the, uh, uh, the, the bulletin. And by the way, I will be pastor on call for the next two weeks. Uh, Joy Lynn is beginning on uh, Monday the 16th. And by the way, I'd like to welcome not only you all, but the folks from Fletcher, as well as those people on YouTube. Uh, we're going to be singing a lot of hymns today, uh, uh, carols. We're going to sing the, uh, the first two verses of these carols. And when we get to the last carol, you're going to be confused because it's hard to hear old angels sing, but it's not the same music. They're all the same words that, that we are used to. This is a, 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 it's a combination of Hark to Hell Angels Sing and a African American spiritual. But uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. And I'm, I'm hoping that when we, when we sing the, the refrain, you uh, really kind of you know, want to get up and, and follow Jesus. Because it's following the light, following Jesus, Jesus the light of the world. And it, it really is a... It's, it's, it's an energetic way of, I think, of us leaving the service and going, uh, going out. And by the way, we talked about uh, trying to have the Christmas Eve candles that we, that we light and everybody pass them out and we blow them out. We decided it wouldn't be very effective uh, when, it's, uh, when it's, it's, it's bright daylight. But what we're going to do instead is uh, uh, during the, uh, the prelude, uh, Barbara is going to light the four Advent candles and the Christ candle. And then as we sing our last uh, carol, the one, Jesus, the light of the world, she's going to take, she's going to extinguish the four Advent candles because as of Christmas Eve, Advent is over and we're now ready for the, the Christmas celebration, and she's going to take the Christ candle, stole it, and move it out and put it on the table where we usually have the refreshments. And so as you leave, I encourage you to stop and look at the candle and think about your memories of having a silent night uh, Christmas Eve uh, celebration, and also simply saying the light is out there for us to continue to follow. Uh, we're delighted today that Ted McKnight is going to be assisting me in celebrating communion. Uh, he was on schedule to do so uh, at, at Thanksgiving, but he was just recovering from a serious fall. Uh, and since that time, he's, he's moved on to, uh, he's moved into Fletcher, uh, but we're delighted that he is back and in pretty good shape uh, and getting, let's say, getting in better shape and he is going to be able to help us with, uh, with communion this morning. Uh, we're in transition. Uh, Pastor Houston was supposed to walk out on Christmas Day and, say, and, and just get in his car and leave. Well, he's, he's, he's gone and uh, we need to uh, have him in our prayers as he begins his sabbatical. Uh, this afternoon, around 9 p.m., Joy Lynn is going to be arriving with her two dogs pulling a small trailer. Uh, she left Wisconsin early this morning, uh, and uh, she's going to be moving in to a house actually right next to ours on, on Yon side. It's almost ready. But hopefully it'll be ready by, uh, by this, this evening. <laughs> 
uh, uh, I, 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 it's, 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 it's going to be a challenge. But anyway, we're, we're, we're working on it. Uh, but uh, uh, she really uh, is going to need some time to, she, her, her biggest concern is her dogs were very anxious when she moved five years ago into the farmhouse where she's been. And this is a much more dramatic move and she's concerned about the dog. So she wants to kind of move in uh, and try to get the dogs uh, settled. Uh, so uh, hold off on trying to visit her at least for a week or so. Uh, and and uh, then she, she actually doesn't begin for uh, another three weeks. Next week, uh, Doug Borka will be preaching, and the following week, uh, Shara Birch will be preaching. So we're, we're well covered during this time, uh, but it, it, uh, it, it, is, it is a time of uh, transition. I think with that, we're ready for the bell and to have our um, prelude. We're so thankful that we have both violin and piano this morning. Join me in our call to worship. May the God of new beginnings be with you. And also, also with you. People of God, lift up your hearts. We lift them to the one who makes all things, including us, new. Children of God, sing praises to the one who gives you new life. In this new year, we praise the one who continues to surprise us with hope and grace.
Let us join in the gathering prayer. Loving God, at Christmas time, we delight again to hear the story of the journey to Bethlehem. The song of the angels, the surprise of the shepherds, and their joy as they found Jesus in the manger. But lest we forget he was born to poverty. Help us to remember at this season all who are hungry and cold. And lest we forget he became a refugee, help us remember now the stranger and the lonely among us. And lest we forget he felt the pain of life and death, help us remember now those who are ill or anxious or bereaved. And as we begin a new year, because we know Jesus came to bring us light, help us to follow and become that light. Amen.
Today, we start a new year. Happy New Year's. I think many of us are glad to see 2022 behind us. It's been a difficult year with the continued political divisiveness. We're going to be beginning the next year where they divided Congress. Uh, the continued war in y Ukraine. The COVID virus that keeps popping up in different strains that uh, is difficult. Uh, we face environmental extremes. We know we survived the sub-zero temperatures of uh, last week. Unfortunately, the sprinkler system in Adshead did not, and there was a major damage to a number of things in Adshead. But get used to it, folks. This is we're 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 going to be continuing to experience uh, climate disasters. Uh, but there's always a balance of, of sorrows, of sadnesses, and of joys. Uh, a personal example is that this last year, uh, 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 we suffered the loss of Terry's son, Andrew, unexpectedly. And then three weeks later, uh, Jenna and the five kids that were very involved in the church here uh, moved to New Jersey, and we're kind of cut off from them. But on Christmas morning, we got a phone call from all six of them. They're currently living in other people in aunts and uncles' houses, so they're spread out among uh, four different homes. But uh, there were, uh, the their aunts and uncles had arranged for them to have a, a, a hotel suite for the week. And so they called us Christmas morning. Uh, Terry was still asleep when they called, but we got, uh, she got out. Actually, I was awake, but still in bed. But anyway, we had a wonderful two-hour Christmas morning celebration with the grandkids. And the good news is they're doing very well. Uh, they're fitting into New Jersey. They're all doing well in school. And... Uh, we asked Morgan to take a picture of him. So here is a selfie of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the five kids and, and, and Jenna. I'm going to put this out in, in, in the hall afterwards so you can take a look at it. But uh, I know that many of us will deeply miss their presence in, in church. But this, this stole the great, wonderful, exciting kids. Uh, another thing that I'm, I'm celebrating... Uh, that happened actually this last year is that the, the Tennessee football team, the volunteers, actually had a great season. And for those of us who are football fans, it really is nice to see they're among the best teams in the country. Uh, so that's, that's a joy. But so, and I'm going to be talking today about, about following the light. And the theme is light, but at the same time, we need to be open to the darkness. Barbara Brown Taylor has written a new book on darkness, which is very powerful. And so I'm not saying we need to be in the light all the time. In fact, if all I have is light, it becomes kind of so-so. So we need to experience some darkness. And she encourages us to be open to no light at all. And you know, Advent is a season of darkness waiting for the light to come. But here we are. We're now in the holiday season, and this is a celebration of light. In fact, today, among the secular uh, community, this is sort of the end of the holiday season. New Year's Day is basically it. Get back to business. Fortunately, uh, the Christmas calendar, Christmas is longer than that, and Next week is Epiphany Sum, uh, Sunday, and we continue to, to talk about and share what it means that God is among us, is with us, is within the world. But getting back to a celebration of light, the winter solstice, December 21st, 
is celebrated because finally, in the northern hemisphere at least, the sun will be getting longer. The days will be getting longer slowly and gradually, but it's a sense that we have turned the corner. And that's really the basis for all of the holiday season is the winter solstice. You know, we have Kwanzi and Hanukkah. They include lighting candles. And of course, we have our traditions as Christians uh, following uh, uh, lighting candles. Uh, and, and, and secular Christmas, you know, the Christmas tree, what's on it? Lights, Lights okay. Uh, outdoor decorations, what are they? Variety of light. So light is a very important theme. But what I want us to think about today is two things which Jesus said. In John 8, 12, he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus is the light of the world. But then, in Matthew, as he begins his ministry and was talking to the crowds up in the mountain, the center of the mound, he describes the Beatitudes, who is blessed. But then he says this. What does he say? You are the soul of the earth, but for today's homily, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others so that... Uh, uh, they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Uh, we had a sermon last year uh, by Don Dowdy on Quakerism, and they, they have it right that the inner light, the spark of the divinity, is within all of us. So here's, what, here's what, what's happening in the celebration on the holiday season, and for us, the celebration of Christmas and then of Epiphany. And it's kind of, you know, it's kind of interesting that in about a month and a half, we'll be starting Lent, another time of darkness. And then the darkest day, Good Friday, but then another celebration of, of life on Easter Sunday. But three things. Jesus is the light of the world. And secondly, we need to follow that light. And thirdly, we need to experience that light within us, and therefore we, be, we become the light. We're now going to have our Christmas Day uh, medley of readings and carols, and again, See how many times the word light pops up as we, as we sing these carols. is from Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 and 6 and 7. And I'm reading from the today's English translation. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. They lived in a land of shadows, but now light is shining on them. A child is born to us. A son is given to us. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. His royal power will continue to grow his kingdom will always be at peace. He will rule as King David's successor, basing his power on right and justice. From now until the end of time, the Lord Almighty is determined to do all of this.
Luke's account of the birth. And this is from the message translation, the second chapter, the first seven verses. About that time, Caesar Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the empire. This was the first census when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone had to travel to his own ancestral hometown to be accounted for. So Joseph went from the Galilean town of Nazareth up to Bethlehem in Judah, David's town, for the census. As a descendant of David, he had to go there. He went with Mary, his fiance, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the hostel.
Our third reading is found in Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 16. There were some shepherds in that part of the country who were spending the night in the fields, taking care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I'm here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all people. This very day, in David's town, your Savior was born, Christ the Lord. And this is what will prove it to you. You will find the baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great army of heaven's angels appeared with the angel, singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from back to heaven, uh, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph, and they saw the baby lie in a manger. Matthew's account of the story of the wise men following a great star with bringing gifts from the second chapter, first 11 verses. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem village, Judah territory, this was during Herod's kingship, a band of scholars arrived in Jerusalem from the east. They asked around, where can we find and pay homage to the newborn king of the Jews? We observed a star in the eastern sky that signaled his birth. We are on pilgrimage to worship him. When word of their inquiry got to Herod, he was terrified. And not Herod alone, but most of Jerusalem as well. Herod lost no time. He gathered all the high priests and religion scholars in the city together and asked, where is this Messiah supposed to be born? They told him, Bethlehem, Judah territory. The prophet Micah wrote it plainly. It's you, Bethlehem, in Judah's land, no longer bringing up the rear. From you will come the leader who will shepherd rule my people, my Israel. 
Herod then arranged a secret meeting with the scholars from the East. Pretending to be as devout as they were, he got them to tell him exactly when the birth announcement star appeared. Then he told them the prophecy about Bethlehem and said, go find this child, leave no stone unturned, and as soon as you find him, send word and I will join you at once in your worship. Instructed by Herod, the scholars set off. Then the star appeared again, the same star they had seen in the eastern skies. It led them on until it hovered over the place of the child. They could hardly contain themselves. They were in the right place. They had arrived at the right time. They entered the house and saw the child in the arms of Mary, his mother. Overcome, they kneeled and worshipped him, and then they opened their luggage and presented gifts, gold, frankincense, myrrh. men that have traveled a long distance to be here this morning and we may not have looked in the sky for a special star to guide us although I remember as a young child in Denver Colorado going up on that cold winter night and looking and looking and looking for that star never found it but I thought well maybe next year but, but now is the time for us to bring our own gifts out of gratitude and thanksgiving for all that we have received and for the year ahead where we'll have an opportunity to continue to show that we've been att paying attention to that star and its significance. So let us now gather our offerings. And if you, we are gathered here, you know there's a plate on the table and at each door. But if you're following us online, we invite you to join us as well. You can go to our website, pleasanthillucctn.org, and you'll find a tab for giving. So let us now think about the many blessings we have received and will yet discover as we listen to the offertory.
We thank you, God, for the many blessings we receive each day. We pray that you will take these gifts and use them to benefit the world around us and the many people yet in need. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity to share a bit of what you have given with us. To us. Amen. We would have celebrated communion on Christmas Eve. We always celebrate it the first Sunday of the month. And today we're celebrating it on the first Sunday and the first day of the new year. So prayerfully and joyfully and reflectively, we gather at this table. At this table, God invites all of us to share in the banquet of life. God invites all those who seek to follow the light to come and to eat and drink from this table. So, come and taste the grace eternal. Come and see that God is good and loving. We remember how on the night he was to be betrayed, Jesus ate a special meal with his closest friends. He gathered with them in an upper room to share the feast of his people's liberation. As a part of that gathering, he took a loaf of bread, he gave thanks, he blessed it, he broke it, and he passed it to them saying, take and eat. This is my body, broken by and for the world. Whenever you eat it, remember me. Then he took the cup, he gave thanks, he blessed it, and passed it to them, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood. Whenever you drink from it, remember me. Remember what I have told you. Loving and gracious God, pour out your spirit on this gathering, on this table, and on this meal. As we eat and drink in fellowship with each other, may, be we, may, be, may we be filled with hope for the future. May the Spirit move among us in this place, in this meal, and help us to be rejuvenated and empowered as we go out to follow the light and live your love in the world. The bread we break is the bread of life, and the cup we share is a cup of promise. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come and eat, for all is ready.
Let us share in the prayer of thanksgiving. The bread has been broken, the cup has been poured, the meal has been shared. Gracious God, we give thanks for the bread for the journey, for your wisdom guiding us along the way. May there be friends to share the road as we dare to dream of creation renewed and the hope and promise of justice for all. Amen. As we stand for this last carol, let's listen to the music one time too before we try to sing it.
So now, let us go and follow the light, and let us be that light, because the presence of God watches over you, the light of Jesus leads us, and the power of the Holy Spirit protects us. For wherever you are, God is. At your side, and deep within, and all is well. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.